Hey guys and welcome back to my channel. Okay, so today's video is going to probably be a long one. Um, it's basically going to be an update of what's been going on with me for the past week or so. So as you can tell by the title, I have gotten a new pet and it is a hamster. If you guys have seen my previous mukbangs or videos and you know that I have been thinking about getting a hamster for quite a while and kind of just been fighting the urge. It all started about a year or so ago. Um, I was basically playing with the idea of getting a new pet. I knew that I wanted something. I kind of felt like something was missing and I pretty much knew that I wanted something but I didn't know what I wanted. I started playing with the idea of getting a bird or a tortoise, um, however with my lifestyle um, I didn't think that those two animals were going to work out for me. Uh, mainly I have four cats so the bird thing probably wasn't going to work out and tortoises live a very long time and I do get pretty cold winters here so I was worried that I wouldn't be able to provide the greens and things that a tortoise may need and I'm just one of those pet owners who's kind of a perfectionist. At least I hold myself to very high standards personally. So it just gave me terrible anxiety and there's like a whole story that goes along with the tortoise thing which I may do a video on one day if you guys want to see that but it just didn't work out. So sometime mid last year I decided to start researching into hamsters. Now I had on a guinea pig, as you guys know I had a guinea pig, um, it was not a very fun experience because she was very aggressive and no matter how much I tried to tame her, um, that whole story is on one of my mukbangs if you want to go watch that, I think it's the Taco Bell one, I'm not sure. It just didn't work out and I was always worried that having a hamster would be very similar to that experience so I was kind of playing with the idea of a hamster but I wasn't really sure. After doing a lot of research and then thinking back to the four hamsters that I owned growing up, I had two hamsters and two gerbils, I realized that a hamster may be what I was looking for and it might be what I was missing, at least it, I felt like I was missing it in my life. So I did all the research and I wanted to be fully prepared and I started watching videos and looking at different hamster forums and just to kind of see what life would be like with owning a hamster and I realized very quickly that it was definitely something that I wanted to do. I knew that I wanted to rescue or adopt a hamster and I was going to do everything in my power to hopefully find one that I could give a good home to just like I've done all of my other pets. So I started looking for hamsters online um, along with doing my research. I was on different forums, I was on Craigslist, I was on different sale apps and in my local area as well as I ended up calling multiple of my local shelters as well as a local critter rescue. I contacted multiple places and all of them got back to me except for the local critter rescue. I left multiple voicemails and that lady just never would call me back. So unfortunately I never knew if she had any hamster dwarf hamsters available. Um, I just never could get in touch with her but I did try. I also talked to my local rescues and as well as different shelters and they said that they did not get hamsters in very often and I don't know if it was attributed to the fact that they have very short lifespans or if perhaps they just aren't something that is extremely needy in our area as far as needing homes but I was having zero luck and this went on for over three to four months. Now I will disclaimer that by saying I did find multiple Syrian hamsters that needed homes on Craigslist. I'm not going to say that I didn't find any hamsters. I did. Some were very sick. I could tell by the pictures. A couple had already been rehomed that I contacted. And then there were a couple of Syrians still available on Craigslist in my local area within an hour range of where I was located. However, I was not wanting a Syrian. I had done a lot of research and I really truly believed that for my first hamster in over 10 years, I really wanted a dwarf and I was pretty sure that that was the one that I wanted, a dwarf hamster. Whether it be a Robo, a Winter White, or a Campbell's, I didn't know, but I knew that I didn't want one that was going to be 7-8 inches long. They usually tend to smell a little more than the dwarfs and they also require a much bigger enclosure. So I had already got the tank and I'm going to put a pin in that because my tank size is going to be something I'm going to get a lot of comments on probably now, probably in the future, but I'm going to cover that in a different video and you guys will understand why I have a 20 gallon. So I had had this 20 gallon for quite a while now. I've been waiting and waiting to get a dwarf hamster because I couldn't find one. And so I thought in the meantime, I would just go to local pet stores and look around. I was going to my local pet stores and just kind of getting a feel of what it would be like to own a hamster. You know, I would just, you know, maybe pet one if I found one that wasn't really skittish. Obviously, I didn't want to hold them too much because I didn't want 
to scar any of them or scare any of them because I do know that they do require a acclimation process and so I would go and just look at them and just think they were so cute and admire them but I never really found one that I would like had to have and obviously my goal was still to rescue or adopt one. Obviously, I firmly believe in that because of dogs and cats. There are so many dogs and cats and sometimes rabbits too. They can be needing homes. They can be being abandoned. Put, they're getting euthanized in shelters. So if you can adopt a rescue, I always, always suggest trying to do that first before going to a pet store or a breeder of any kind. Well, one night about a week ago, it was March 1st, I decided to go to a local pet store as I normally do just to look around and as I approached the hamster tanks, I saw a hamster that was a little fat ball of black and white and she was sitting in her food bowl cramming her face full of food and pellets and she was the only hamster that was awake at the time. I went during the afternoon in hopes that they would all be awake, but she was actually the only one and she was just sitting there just like a little cow eating all of this food by herself. From the moment I saw her, I knew that I loved her, I wanted her, and all of this time that I was thinking about getting a hamster, I wanted to name my hamster Sushi. Uh, that was just something that I thought was a cute name and I was like, oh yeah, if I got a hamster, that's probably what I would name it, but from the moment I saw her, it was just instantaneous, it was subconscious, and I just said to myself, you're my little moo. You're my little moo. And I just had to have her. After I saw her and I felt that instant connection with her, I decided to get her. Fast forward 24 hours later, I had her home. She was in her tank. However, I decided to wait the standard 24 to 48 hours without touching her that they usually suggest you do with hamsters just so that they can get acclimated to their environment without being spooked or scared or stressed or anything from being handled a lot. Even though I knew that she was pretty much going to be really easy to tame um, because she was just so sweet at the pet store, um, I still wanted to give her that time. However, from the first day, I realized that there was something probably wrong with her. Um, nothing terrible, but I did notice that she was scratching a lot and that raised a red flag for me because she was scratching a lot with her back legs, um, almost like a dog or cat would. So I noticed her scratching and I decided to just keep an eye on it, but I still didn't want to touch her, so I waited till day two. So when I noticed the scratching was getting significantly worse, I decided to call a vet um, and I had an appointment for day three of owning her and that was last Saturday. I found a vet who would see her. I basically just told him that she was scratching a lot and this was worrying me and while I was waiting for my appointment that whole day Friday, I was just looking on forums and YouTube videos and Googling what could possibly be the problem. So after I got to the vet Saturday, the vet decided that she believed it was ringworm and she prescribed a myconazole antifungal lotion for me to put on her topically. She did a skin scrape and a culture for ringworm possible fungus. However, it takes two weeks to get those results back and she didn't want to wait the two weeks to treat her so she prescribed the topical lotion. I started treating Moo that day with the topical lotion and she hates it. She was clawing at it and basically just scratching herself more than ever. If anything, it was making it worse but I did what the doctor said and I proceeded to put that on her for the next two to three days. So I called the vet back and she basically told me that um, it should have been getting better by now. She should have seen some of the itch maybe going away or subsiding and this surprised her that it would be getting worse so she wanted to see her again. So I made an appointment for Wednesday morning. However, I also made an appointment with a better vet in my opinion who is a specialist in pocket pets and hamsters and things. Um, However, he was booked out to Friday, so I wasn't going to be able to see him till Friday, so I decided to just take Moo back to the first vet um, just because I didn't want to wait a whole week. Again, this was like Tuesday or Wednesday. I didn't want to wait all week to get her into a different vet. So unfortunately, Wednesday was also the day that my husband and I had a out-of-town trip that we had to go on. Um, it was for a concert, an overnight trip to Georgia. Um, it was going to be like a little road trip for us um, since we don't live in Georgia. And um, unfortunately, we were going to have to take Moo with us, which was fine. But at the same time, I hated that I was going to have to cause her possible further stress. Um, but she needed to be treated, so that's what I was going to have to do. So on the way out of town, we decided to just stop by the vet. I also filmed um, all little excerpts, like vlog style clips of all of the trip and us taking her to the vet and all of that. It will all be included in a video that I will be doing in the future for all of the treatment. Uh, basically like a whole video compiled of Moo's entire treatment over this two weeks. And so stay tuned for that video in the future. 
But anyway, Wednesday morning came and we ended up taking her to the vet and the vet said to continue on with the myconazole. She didn't want us to stop it even though I really didn't like putting it on her because I knew it was irritating her um, and stressing her out. Um, but she insisted I continue it as well as gave me antibiotics. So um, as of Wednesday, she's been on antibiotics and she's still on them. Friday finally came and I realized that the ivermectin shot that she got Wednesday as well as the antibiotics that she got Wednesday from the first vet um, weren't really proving to show any results and so I decided to keep my second opinion um, appointment with the second vet and I'm really glad that I did because he specialized in small animals and even though it took me a few more days to be able to get an appointment with him it was worth the wait and he basically just assessed all of um, the irritation on her stomach and basically just wanted to let me know what he thought about the irritation and what he thought that it could possibly be and he agreed with the first vet that he thinks that it could be ringworm which is like um, a parasitic type thing um, he said that it could be bacterial as well as the first vet had also said that that's why um, the ivermectin he believed was a good idea that she got Wednesday. However, he wanted to let it sit in her system for a few more days to be able to see results. He also agreed the antibiotics were a good idea and he wanted me to keep her on those. Um, however, he did not like the myconazole lotion that she prescribed and that Moo had been having all week now. She had still been getting that and I agreed that I thought that it was making it worse. He agreed he thought that it was making it worse because with her being able to feel that oily lotion on her it was actually making her irritate the spot more by scratching and he prescribed a oral antifungal which I'm gonna put the name in here because I can't pronounce it so currently um, we're caught up this is Saturday um, yesterday was Friday so that was the visit so right now she's been on 24 hours of the oral antifungal and then she is also on the oral antibiotic that she has to get twice a day and I will include the names of that here and she has also had the ivermectin, which she got Wednesday. And she is no longer on the myconazole topical lotion. And I do not really suggest that for a hamster because personally, in my experience after using it for a week, not only did I not see any results, but I also believe that it irritated her further. So now that we are all caught up, that is pretty much the gist of what I've been dealing with with her for the past week. Um, what we've been going through, what we've kind of been um, dealing with as far as her irritation on her skin goes. I'm going to give her about five to seven days before I take her back to the vet for a follow-up or anything um, just to see and let these medicines really have a chance to get into her system. Thank you guys for watching. If you have any questions or concerns, feel free to comment down below or subscribe. I will see you guys in my next video. Watch out for that one because it is going to be coming up pretty soon. I want to wait till the end to film um, all of the clips kind of together in one how-to video that will hopefully be helpful and give you guys a very raw, real, you know, um, random look into how all this has been going. But thank you guys for watching. I will see you guys next time. Till then, be kind. Bye.